Let me focus your attention in on long positions. Remember what I was talking about? If you've been following our uh, videos that we've been doing on our uh, YouTube channel, and I told you it was the largest long position they had ever had, non-commercials. And they were likely going to take profits on those positions. And look at the next number, 150, okay? How's it going, fellow traders? Magic Trader here, and welcome back, welcome back to another episode where we're going to take a look at the latest CFTC data brought to you by the CFTC. And we're going to look at the data that was released on June 25th, 2024. So let's start off by looking at a brief snapshot of that data. And if we take a look at the brief snapshot, again, I always like to look at the change column. I like to look at what's been the big movers and we can scan across and we look at euro us dollar bearish us dollar japanese yen bullish um copper nope not copper oil uh 52 bullish now look at s p 500 105 that's extremely bullish extremely bullish so before we get to that why don't we start by examining gold here we go gold now, if you've been following us for a while, you'd know that uh, we've been tracking uh, gold for a very long time and we've been looking at the positions and we've seen that they've been getting bullish uh, ever since March. They've been extremely bullish. All right. You can see the, uh, the chart here and you can see how the columns have become a little bit more red, meaning more aggressive ever since March, March 5th. And look what's happened with price ever since. March. Okay. It's been rallying up ever since. So we got a very nice move to the upside on gold and now it is just pausing. Okay. Now, as you can see with the clouds that I have drawn in, we had dark clouds up until here. Okay. That means an aggressive accumulation of a long position. And now recently it's not as dark anymore. Why? Because we've been seeing a slight decrease in positions, okay? From reaching 300,000, then they drop them down. Now added a little bit back uh, to the highs, but we still haven't reached those uh, 300K uh, that we had uh, previously. But nonetheless, still very bullish. And if you look at the columns, right? We always look at these columns to see what our sentiment is. Our sentiment for quite some time was neutral until they start accumulating those long positions and then slowly, slowly, slowly the sentiment indicator turned to bullish. So this is where we're at right now. We're bullish gold. The banks are bullish gold. Do I want to be buying right now? No, I don't want to be buying right now. Why? Because if you look at the chart, you could see that we're ranging. Okay. This is what's taking place right now. Price has reached this high and it has just paused. So now we have price just sitting in this range. Unless it breaks out of the range, I'm not interested in trading it. Am I bullish? Yes. Do I think that over time price is going to go higher? Yes, that's what I do think. But I don't want to speculate that it's going to go higher from here because you know what? There is a chance that we could see a decline. And if price was to decline, it would decline to very nice areas of demand. And I'd much rather buy at those very nice areas of demand rather than take a loss by speculating price will go up from where it's at right now. So I'm not interested in doing that. And that's why I am waiting. Okay. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on with the Euro, the dollar, many other pairs. So let's take a look at the other currencies uh, or look at the other currencies that we have um, data for and see what biases we have here. Let's remember gold or bullish. Can it move higher? Yes, it can. After this pause, yes, it could definitely do that. But is there a chance price is going to decline? Hmm. Well, let's take a look at the other ones and see what they have to tell us. Now we go over to oil. Oil hasn't been doing much here, okay? We see that they were somewhat aggressive back in April with their longs, okay? And that was March, April here. And you can see that they took profit on those positions, all right? Took profit on longs, which fueled a move to the downside. 
Now we're seeing a little bit of an increase in long positions again. Okay, take a look here. Look at the long column. 361. Look at shorts. Do you think they're you think they're focused on shorts right now? The institutions? The ones that are moving price? You think they're really focused on shorts? Look at the coloration of shorts. They're blue. Do you know why they're blue? That means the positions are neutral. Very cooled off. Very cooled off. They're not even focused on short positions right now. They're more focus, focused on longs. Does that mean that price can go up? Definitely. Definitely. There is a bias that price is going to go up. I mean, the last area of major significant uh, of major significance that was contacted was this demand area here. This was institutional buying. All right. That took place. Price came into it and we see the buying. It fell short of hitting the demand here, but the last area that was contacted was demand. Okay. Buying. Uh, institutional supply is not located anywhere on the chart until you get up here. So buying and strength in oil is what we suspect we're going to see. That is the bias. Strength in oil. Okay. Now remember that as we move forward. It will be important to know. U.S. dollar. So I've been telling you that this one's been a little bit strange. It's not in line with the other dollar-led pairs that we follow. But um, what can we observe? Well, if I take a look at the data, what I observe is that we are enter in, entering into bullishness in terms of net positions. Uh, but this has happened very quickly, it seems, because if you take a look here at this column here, the sentiment, it was bearish. Okay, and all of a sudden, boom, we knock into bullishness. Why is that? Well, take a look. Contracts expired just recently and leading up into contract expirations. Look what the institutions did with their short positions. 21,000, boom, down to 12,000. Very, very cooled off. Now, yes, this last week, they increased them back to a little bit higher than 12 at 14,000. But since contract expirations, They've also been focusing on long positions, adding them back. OK, so we haven't seen these numbers since back here, which was in April. But last time we reached those numbers, look what happened. OK, last time we reached those numbers, look what happened with price. Pay attention to this because it's these details that will increase your knowledge. Right. So nothing steady in terms of longs. There hasn't been anything sustainable in terms of, you know, increasing positions and causing price to move in a direction for a longer period of time. So it's safer to say that price is kind of ranging right now. OK, we see this predictable price action move up, then down, move up, then down, move up. What's likely? Hmm. Maybe move down. Possible. Why is that? Well, last time we were at those levels and they took profits, price declined. OK, could they increase uh, their shorts again as price declines? Yeah, it's possible. So do I have a slight bearish bias on the dollar? I do I have a slight bearish bias. Very, very difficult to determine direction with what we have here. But as the Sherlock system is applied, uh, as the Sherlock analysis process is applied to the data, to the charts, to all the other data that we have, I'm slowly putting the pieces of the puzzle together, trying to come up with some direction that we can base uh, our decisions on in the near future. So that's my bias, slight bias to the downside on the dollar. Now, Aussie. Um, look at this one. This one for the longest time has been doing the same thing. And we've been tracking it with our clouds. And what we've been seeing is that they've been adding to short positions, then taking profits, adding to short positions and then taking profits. And it's been the same thing over and over and over again. It's actually quite bizarre. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this um, run this long. Uh, I, I really haven't. But we are inside an institutional area of demand and it is holding and something very interesting here, we have this bullish engulf price came down towards this area. 
and we're seeing that push to the upside again. I have a bullish bias on the Aussie, even though they haven't been focusing on long positions for a very long time. I do have a bullish bias. And one of the interesting things is if we look at the data on the left hand side of the screen, <clears throat> you'll see um, I have data on this chart that goes back to November 21st. And if we look through long positions, zoop, this last week's data is the biggest long position we have seen since November 21st, 2023. That's a pretty long time. So does it mean something? Don't know. But isn't it interesting how we're seeing a little bit of a sign, a little bit of evidence to suggest the dollar's going to drop? Hmm. Yeah. And so if that happens, then we would likely see a rally up here. Hmm. Biggest long position. I'm suspecting we might see a push to the upside. All right, guys, you see what I'm seeing here? US CAD. This one's a good one. This one's a good one. Let me focus your attention in on long positions. Remember what I was talking about? If you've been following our uh, videos that we've been doing on our uh, YouTube channel, I hope you are because you'd be learning a, a ton about how these markets work and the uh, players that are actually buying and selling and causing the movements, the major movements in the markets here. So just recently we reached 170,000. And I told you it was the largest long position they had ever had, non-commercials. And they were likely going to take profits on those positions. And look at the next number, 150, okay? So they indeed took profits on those positions because they closed out 50, or sorry, 20,000. 20,000, okay? That's huge. Are they focusing on shorts right now? Not really. Okay, not really. Look at the coloration of the cells here. Very bullish. Yes, very bullish. Well, they have like a record size long position. Okay, but this doesn't mean you should be going long. So what do we see? Well, what we know for a fact is that usually when uh, non-commercials reach maximum size, they tend to take profits on those positions. And so we are expecting a drop in price because if there's no more buying what do you think is going to happen price is going to drop okay didn't we just say the u.s dollar is likely going to drop from the evidence that we are collecting hmm interesting so now you start to see how things are coming together here because u.s dollar is giving us evidence that it could drop aussie's giving us evidence that it could rally now we have the U.S. CAD, and wait a minute, weren't we looking at oil just a few minutes ago? And what did we see with oil? Yes, uh, the numbers were indicating that we're likely going to see a push higher on oil. Well, U.S. CAD, the Canadian dollar, dollar is, is, a, is a commodity currency. It's tied to oil. And so with that, if the U.S. CAD drops, guess what happens to the Canadian dollar? its value goes up and um, and if oil goes up the Canadian dollar value tends to go up they're both in line so you see how the evidence is supporting each other here mm-hmm yes indeed let's move along um, euro no we missed one US Swiss not much to see here we see longs increasing to 53,000, and then in the last few weeks, they're profit taking. So, this idea of what we suspect will happen on the US CAD, it's already happening here on the US Swiss. Obviously, you can see that there has been no interest whatsoever in shorts uh, for the last couple months, okay, or a few months. And so, profit taking took place, and this is a perfect example of what happens when profit taking pl takes place. Look what happens with price. A drop in price okay now again coloration of the cells yes is bullish over the last several weeks is bullish does it mean we want to get in no it doesn't mean we want to get in could they add more to their longs I mean maximum size is 89,000 technically they could but do I suspect that that's what's gonna happen no I don't suspect that that is going to happen okay all right now let's get to the euro US dollar this one's a good one. 
This one is a good one. So we look at the data and the first thing that comes to our minds is they are reducing long positions. 187, 171, 167. Now at the same time, look at what they're doing with short positions. 121, 144, 163, 175. So I know there's this um, thing that when typical, your typical average trader, when they see this data, they're thinking to themselves, uh, they're closing out longs and they're adding shorts. They're probably planning on dropping price right now. Huh. But let's keep things into consideration here. When we look at the uh, coloration of the cells here, what do we see? Do you see any significant colors over the last few weeks? Not really. A little bit bullish? Yes, back in June, okay? They were a little bit bullish, but that's because they were aggressive with their long positions. Now they're taking profits. We're seeing neutral, okay? Neutral, neutral coloration of the cells here. And let me point out something else to you. Let me point out something else to you. Take a look at this. Let me erase this and let me get this and boom. We look at shorts. Look back in April, 23, 177,000. Is that where we're at right now? Yeah, pretty much. April 23, folks. Let me show you the chart. April 23, March, April. Here, look what happened when shorts reached that amount. They closed them off, which caused price to rally. And now we're at that same spot in terms of the data. So, bullish bias? Yeah, I do have a slight bullish bias here. It's not that there's a strong trend here. We don't see significant buying taking place. So to have pinpoint accuracy in direction of price at this stage is very difficult but by looking at all the evidence and putting the pieces of the puzzle together and trying to come up with some kind of direction that can guide me and my understanding of why price is doing what it's doing i look at this and i can't help but have a slight bullish bias all right so i look at this and i'm like yeah it looks like it's uh probably gonna go up in the next week or two. All right, so keep that in mind as we head into the next week. Uh, pound, look at this. So pound, they entered into massive long positions here back in March. Then they couldn't take them anymore. So what do they do? Profit take, okay? Now they got back up and 110, 105. Now they started to profit take and we got the slight drop in price. Could they continue profit taking and cause price to, to drop even further? Yes, they could. But pound and the euro, they're likely going to stay somewhat in line. Now, we've seen some movement in in uh, the pound, and uh, especially this year, um, taking off and doing its own thing, actually dropping further than the euro, making moves before the euro. So I would suspect that it's you know it's it's going to be more in line with what the euro is doing but i also am aware that it can go off and do its own things right now i look at longs i see them somewhat aggressive can they continue to add sure they can maximum size is 135,000. they can continue to push and we can see a rally up in price like this but 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 there is a chance we're going to see sell off and there could be pressure to the downside okay there is that chance i wouldn't be trading the pound right now is what i'm telling you us dollar japanese yen what a mover unbelievable isn't it just unbelievable well look let's take a look at the data last time we got super aggressive with long positions was back here in april okay in april and what happened massive profit taking i told everybody i warned everybody Massive profit, profit taking. They're reaching maximum size. They're going to profit take. And look, they profit take. They did. They're profit taking right down into an area of buying. Then they came in and bought this up. Now they're buying it here. All right. So reaching 208. Could we see a decline at some point? Yes. Yes, indeed, we definitely can. 
But if it declines, it's going to decline right to an area of buying. The banks are buying this one, folks, very aggressively. U.S. Japanese yen is being bought up aggressively. And until areas of demand are no longer in play and supply zones are in play, I am not bearish this chart. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> do I think eventually it's going to drop? Yes, I do. Obviously, eventually it's going to drop. What about the timing? I have no clue. I have no clue. This is its own beast. So I will wait until the charts tell me when it's going to drop, and then I will uh, take part in trades at that point. Uh, Kiwi. All right. Take a look. Long, super aggressive, 43. 43,000. Okay. And we haven't seen profit taking uh, just yet. So just aggressive, aggressive. Accumulation of long position is causing the sentiment to become bullish. Net positions is bullish at a positive 26,000. Uh, do we still have room to go up to maximum size 40, 47? Yes, still room. Do I think they're going to start buying right now? Well, listen, I think it's going to follow the other markets. So if the other markets decide to go higher, this is going to go higher. What does that mean? These numbers can get bigger. Am I going to trade this one? Not really. I don't like the chart. I don't like the supply and demand dynamics of this. So I will stay away from it. Okay. But I got a little surprise for you. Let's take a look at the S&P, shall we? S&P is bullish, folks. Super bullish. Now, if you remember, if, you, if you've been following us on our Telegram channel or even on our Twitter, you'll know that last week I was posting um, uh, some articles that I came across. And I think I talked about it in one of the YouTube videos as well. All this talk about the market crashing. Oh, this expert and this expert, you know, all this noise in the media about the market crashing i said don't pay attention to it the institutions are buying this market guys they're buying this market and yet they're coming out with these headlines that you know so and so are saying that the market cr can crash 40 50 60 70 percent it's ridiculous it's ridiculous but then i look at the data and i'm like wait a minute what do we have here ladies and gentlemen and I see that back on June 18, they had a massive short position of 429. Oh, let me guess. Is it possible that when the news came out and all these headlines came out and all these experts were saying, this market can crash, this market can crash. Is it possible that retail came in and snagged up about 100,000 of those shorts? Because look at what, what those position, positions are at now. 337,000. That's a far cry from 429. Okay. Interesting, isn't it? Indeed. Yes. Just something that you should be thinking of. I think looking at these things puts things into perspective when it comes to the markets. Okay. But don't take my word for it. Just take note of these things. And as things play out, watch as things unfold. And you will see for yourself what you should see. All right, ladies and gents, that's it. It is Sunday. Tomorrow's a holiday, but we're still doing our level one class. If you are excited like we are, you should be because this level one class, the master class, the supply and demand, we're teaching you how to locate institutional supply and demand zones, how to draw the trend lines. I mean, this is the foundation of trading, in my opinion. It's the foundation of trading. You want to trade, you want to know what's going on, you have to understand institutional supply and demand. Well, we're doing uh, another session tomorrow morning, and all new students, you join, watch the video lessons, watch the two other sessions that we did, catch up, and you could be ready by tomorrow morning. All right? Anyways, take care. You know to reach me, www.whiteoakfx.com. Have yourself a good one. And uh, all the best out there. Happy Canada Day. Take care.